friends welcome to today's class today we are going to study about metabolism of nucleotides what are nucleotides uh, nu uh, purine nucleotides metabolism in this we are in this lecture we are going to discuss all of it okay so first of all i would like to uh, tell something about nucleotides what are nucleotides nucleotides they are the structural components of dna and rna we already know what is dna and what is rna so dna is deoxyribonucleic acid and rna is ribonucleic acid so as the name suggests it has nucleic acid it has a sugar moiety and it has a phosphate group so what is nucleotide here nucleotide is the combination of all three of it that means it has nitrogenous base in it nitrogenous base that is purines and pyrimidines purines in purines we have uh, two nitrogenous bases uh, two nitrogenous bases that is adenine and guanine whereas in pyrimidine we have three nitrogenous bases that is guanine cytosine and thymine sorry cytosine thymine and uracil purine has adenine and guanine whereas pyrimidine has cytosine uracil and thymine okay so uracil is in case of rna whereas thymine is in case of dna next thing what do we have in nucleotide is the pentose sugar and a phosphate group pentose sugar we have two pentose sugar here both are different in uh, ribose and deoxyribose nucleic acid so ribose has as the name suggests rna has ribose sugar whereas dna has deoxyribose you can see what is the difference in ribose and deoxyribose sugar in ribose sugar at the second position there is an oh group whereas in deoxyribose we have an hydrogen present in it so this is the main difference between ribose and deoxyribose sugar now let us discuss about purines so in this lecture we are going to study about purines here is the structure of purine nucleotide so the purine is purine nitrogenous base purine has the structure in which you can see there are uh, the parts of purines in which the there is nitrogen there is carbon so here is uh, number is also done here so the first nitrogen is comes from aspartate aspartate is an amino acid we all know about it so nitrogen number 1 has came from aspartate nitrogen number 3 and nitrogen number 9 has came from glutamine again an amino acid and nitrogen number 7 is from glycine another amino acid so there are presence of three amino acid aspartate glutamine and glycine now the carbon let us talk about the carbon carbon number second is from n10 formal thf what is thf here ths thf is tetrahydrofolate carbon number 8 is again from n10 formal thf thf is tetrahydrofolate is a very important uh, compound in this whole process we will discuss it later on so as do we know that this full structure has came from some of the amino acid and rest the carbons are from n10 formal thf and one is from carbon dioxide so as we know that purine they are built upon a pre existing ribose 5 phosphate in carbohydrate metabolism that means when the purine nucleo uh, nitrogenous base will be formed it will be formed that starting material that is ribose 5 phosphate is has already came from carbohydrate metabolism so we are already having ribose 5 phosphate and on that we are preparing our purine which is the best suited place for synthesis of purine nucleotide it is the liver and there are certain element there are certain things 
which do not which cannot produce purines that is our erythrocyte our polymorphonuclear leukocytes and brain these are some organs these are some uh, thing present which do not produce purine nucleotides purine nitrogenous bases so this is the whole synthesis that is biosynthesis of purine nucleotide so as i already told you that purine nucleotide is formed on a pre existing ribosal 5 phosphate which is which has came from our carbohydrate metabolism so in this regard first of all we already have our alpha d ribose 5 phosphate then after that with the help of prpp synthetase enzyme and an uh, and an use of atp molecule which then converted into amp molecule the thing will converted into 5 phosphoribosyl alpha pyrophosphate then this 5 phosphoribosyl alpha pyrophosphate will convert into beta 5 phosphoribosyl amine with the presence of an enzyme that is prpp glutaryl amido transferase glutamyl amido transferase and there is a conversion of glutamine into glutamate as now you can see the uh, the structure in the previous page the structure there is a presence of glutamine that means nitrogen number 3 and nitrogen number 9th n3 and n9 are coming from glutamine so now we have started with our presence of glutamine here that means now we are preparing we are synthesizing the purine nucleotide so uh, with the help of glutamine we have prepared five beta 5 phosphoribosyl amine which then formed uh, converted into glycinamide ribosyl 5 phosphate with the help of an enzyme synthetase that means now we are incorporating our glycine here which is coming out from our beta 5 ribosyl phosphoribosyl amine and an incorporation of glycine plus an atp molecule with the enzyme synthetase and we are having our glycinamide ribosyl 5 phosphate now this glycinamide ribosyl 5 phosphate will converted into ribose uh, sorry formal glycinamide ribosyl 5 phosphate so here we are incorporating our n10 formal thf so from this step to the this is the fourth step as uh, i can give the numbers to the step it is already given in your book the reference is written here so um, in the in these steps there are already 11 to 12 steps for the synthesis of our purine nucleotide from this step that means the fourth step of from fourth step to our 10th step that means second last step is very important because there is an incorporation of thf later on i will tell you why this thf is so important for synthesis of this purine nucleotide now uh, once we have incorporated our n10 formal thf which then converted into thf that is tetrahydrofolate with then enzyme formal transferase we are able to prepare formal glycinamide ribosyl 5 phosphate which then converted into formal glycinamide uh, glycinamidine ribosyl 5 phosphate so there is a difference a little difference in the name first was formal glycinamide ribosyl 5 phosphate and the second one which we are preparing from the previous compound that is formal glycinamide ribosyl 5 phosphate we are preparing formal glycinamidine ribosyl 5 phosphate because here again is a presence of glutamine so we have seen already two of the amino acids here that is 
first we have seen here that is glutamine then we have seen our glycine and now again we are watching or about glutamine so glutamine there is a formation of formal glycinamidine ribosyl 5 phosphate which then converted into 5 amino imidazole ribosyl 5 phosphate with the enzyme synthetase because we are synthesizing here what we are synthesizing we are synthesizing 5 amino midazole amino imidazole ribosyl 5 phosphate so we have prepared that now in the next step we are preparing our next intermediate that is 5 amino imidazole carboxylate ribosyl 5 phosphate now the uh, we can already assume what will be the next step and what will be the next thing which is going to be incorporated in these steps to make the intermediate the name already suggests what we have used in here we have used there is an incorporation of carbon dioxide here that why the name is 5 amino imidazole carboxylate ribosyl 5 phosphate then with the of course with the enzyme the enzyme is carboxylase the enzyme is carboxylase here next after the synthesis of 5 amino imidazole carboxylate ribosyl 5 phosphate we have prepared our next compound that is 5 amino imidazole 4 succinyl carboxamide ribosyl 5 phosphate a big name actually but this is the next product which is the next intermediate which has been prepared that is 5 amino imidazole 4 succinyl carboxamide ribosyl 5 phosphate in this step we have seen that there is the incorporation of our last amino acid that is aspartate so we have all our amino acids till now incorporated here so the structure in the previous slide we have seen our few amino acid that is aspartate glutamine and glycine all are here we have studied and what we have else other than amino acid we have seen n10 formal thf and incorporation of carbon dioxide so we have seen here everything and with this we have synthesized of course with an enzyme that is synthetase with this we have our 5 amino imidazole 4 succinyl carboxamide ribosyl 5 phosphate with this we are again in our last uh, few last steps that is the synthesis of our 5 amino imidazole 4 carboxamide ribosyl 5 phosphate with an intermediate you have heard this name uh, several times in your uh, carbohydrate metabolism that is fumarate so here we are incorporating we are the infumerate uh, is uh, releasing out is coming out of the reaction so fumarate and the enzyme which we are using here is adenosuccinate lyase here we are using the enzyme adenosuccinate lyase and there is a synthesis of this compound this intermediate that names as 5 amino imidazole 4 carboxamide ribosyl 5 phosphate then again we are incorporating our n10 formal thf with an enzyme formal transferase and we have our second last compound very important compound here that is 5 formal amino imidazole 4 carboxamide ribosyl 5 phosphate this is the compound by which we will get our last product our purine nucleotide okay why i am calling it nucleotide every time we will get to know later on i'll tell you after the synthesis will be over so here we after the synthesis of 5 forma form amino imidazole 4 carboxamide ribosyl 5 phosphate with the enzyme cyclohydrolase and there is a release of water molecule and we have our last compound that is the result of our purine nucleotide synthesis that is ionosine monophosphate now i wanted to tell you something that in this whole process 
in this purine nucleotide biosynthesis we I told you that in the previous slide I told you that we have three things in a nucleotide that means a nucleotide will be synthesized of three things there should be three things very importantly should be present there to form a nucleotide first is your nitrogenous base that is purine and pyrimidine second is your pentose sugar and third is your phosphate group and now we are discussing we have discussed in the this slide that biosynthesis of purine nucleotide when I am saying the word nucleotide that means it has all three elements of a nucleotide that means it has a purine it has a sugar moiety and it has a phosphate group so the thing the uh, the last product the result is our ionosine monophosphate that means we are incorporating a phosphate unit here also so the full structure the full structure of purine in the previous we have seen where the elements are coming from in this biosynthesis we have discussed all of it so uh, in this step there are steps written over here we can uh, revise it with the help of these steps that ribose 5-phosphate we have earned it from our carbohydrate metabolism we have not prepared it here we have prepared it somewhere else that is our carbohydrate metabolism and in this synthesis we are using a ready-made ribose 5-phosphate molecule on which we are preparing on which we are synthesizing our purine nucleotide okay so ribose 5-phosphate we already have here we are using to make our nucleotide that is purine nucleotide so in this reaction we uh, use our ATP molecule to form phosphoribosyl pyrophosphate a very important compound in the regulation of purine nucleotide it is very important for the regulation of PRPP uh, sorry for purine nucleotide PRPP is very important second in the second step glutamine enters glutamine transfers its nitrogen to PRPP and replace pyrophosphate and produces 5 ribosyl amine the enzyme PRPP glutamyl amidotransferase is controlled by a feedback mechanism we already know what feedback mechanism is feedback mechanism feedback inhibition whether I would like to tell you what is feedback mechanism feedback inhibition actually feedback inhibition is when there is a need of something when we are preparing something there is a need of certain enzymes there is need of certain elements to prepare the next product the intermediate then there will be the availability of that particular thing which is needed for the synthesis this is your feedback that means we want certain things for the preparation and we are getting it once the preparation is done once we are done with the preparation the number of uh, intermediates that we are we need once we are done with that there will be a message sent through the message center sent by the message center and to the receiver end that there is no need to produce more uh, that elements to produce are which are required to produce the intermediates so there will be an inhibition for the production of those elements for final synthesis of the intermediate and this whole process is controlled uh, involuntary we are we have uh, if we want to control it by our hands we will we won't be able to because this whole thing is done by itself involuntary it is happening so the purine biosynthesis pyrimidine biosynthesis synthesis of dna rna whatever is happening here it is all dependent on these productions okay and these productions are uh, controlled by feedback mechanisms positive feedback mechanism negative feedback mechanism so here what we are saying is glutamine transfer is done by feedback inhibition mechanism when there will be no need there will be an inhibition there will be a message sent from the message center to the receiver end that we don't uh, we don't want any more synthesis of this particular compound and then we are done with it then like that further steps are here so phosphoribosyl 
uh, uh, phosphoribosyl reacts with then glycine and N10 formula. Yeah, here I would like to tell you about what is the use of this N10 formal tetrahydrofolate. What is this? The tetrahydrofolate is a very important element for the production of folic acid. And folic acid is very important for the synthesis of purine biosynthesis, which is produced by the bacteria, which is produced by the microorganisms. What will happen if we hamper this folic acid? Ultimately, when we need to stop any bacterial growth, we use antibiotics. We use sulfonamide kind of antibiotics. Yeah, I would like to show you. Yeah, th in this step, you can see that the folic acid is very important for purine nucleotide. That is from reaction 4 to 10. And sulfonamides are the drugs. You have heard about sulfonamides many of the times that doctor has advised us to take sulfonamide because we were having some bacterial infection. We were uh, going through an infection phase. So, doctor has uh, suggested to take sulfonamides. Why he has suggested? Because sulfonamides are the structural analogous of PABA. Now, what is PABA here? PABA is para amino benzoic acid. These para amino benzoic acid are the medicines which induces purine nucleotide synthesis by the synthesis of folic acid. And if we incorporate sulfonamide in that place, in the place of PABA, because they are the structural analogous of PABA, they will ultimately hamper the purine nucleotide biosynthesis. So, if we want to stop the purine nucleotide in bacteria, of course, so we will use our sulfonamides. Now, there is one more question here. Why sulfonamide do not hamper us, do not hamper human cells, do not stop the biosynthesis of purine nucleotide in humans because humans do not produce folic acid. We use folic acid as a dietary element. We eat folic acid. We take folic acid um, that uh, medicines. We do not produce folic acid. That why sulfonamide do not hamper us, do not hamper humans. It only hampers the microorganisms which produces folic acid and that folic acid is used for purine biosynthesis. If uh, then we have synthesized our inosine monophosphate and with the help of that inosine monophosphate, we can synthesize our several AMP, GMP and IMP. AMP is adenosine monophosphate, GMP is guanosine monophosphate and IMP is ionosine monophosphate which we have prepared early. Okay. Then this is the salvage pathway. Salvage pathway means that we already have something with us and out of that something we are preparing a new thing. That means purines can be directly converted to the corresponding nucleotide and this process is called as salvage pathway. That means we have adenine, we can make AMP out of it. We have guanine, we can make GMP out of it. We have hypoxanthine, we can make inosine monophosphate out of it. Now, uh, mm, there is a name hypoxanthine. I would like to tell you if there is a deficiency of hypoxanthine guanine phosphoribosyl transparent, which is the enzyme for converting our guanine into guanosine monophosphate and hypoxanthine into hypoxanthine monophosphate. If there is a deficiency of this particular enzyme, there is a disease named as Lesh Nyhan syndrome. It is specifically a gender linked metabolic disorder. It uh, affects males exclusively and there is thus uh, there is some symptoms like uh, overproduction of uric acid, neurological abnormalities like mental retardation, aggression behavior and some learning disabilities also. Then let us talk about the degradation of purine nucleotide by studying the whole cycle by studying that means if we degrade, if we catabolize our adenosine, we catabolize our inosine, we catabolize our guanosine, the last product, the degradation product is uric acid and the uric acid is 
uh, water soluble component but if there is accumulation of uric acid in our body that will produces many diseases and we'll discuss it on our some other slides okay so this is the whole process of degradation of urine nucleotide excretory product i have already told you the uric acid that is also called as 268 trioxypurine that is the final excretory product but the very good thing about uric acid is it is water soluble and it is easily excreted out from our body but if there is some kind of deficiency happens if there is over production of uric acid is there so there will be an accumulation of uric acid in our body which causes certain diseases and these are the references which i have used hope you enjoyed the session thank you so much